Hey, welcome back, everybody. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Orion Line R2. This is a distro that I've uh, looked at before, and uh, they just had a new release, which is uh, R2. And you got a little website right here that shows you everything that comes with it. And you get a little message like, before downloading, know that Orion may have bugs. Please contact support if you encounter issues. Thank you for your download. And once new in the March 5th update, added EPEL to the default repository list, added extras to the default repository list, fixed repository missing bug, added wine support, added SnapD support. And what do you get in Orion Lime 2? Based on Alma Linux, optional flat hub add-on, Anaconda installer, wine support, low system requirements, Firefox browser, EPEL repositories, Docker support for containers, familiar layout compared to other OSs, moderate customization, SnapD repositories, NVIDIA and AMD drivers out of the box, full UEFI support. And you got the download links right here. So this is the one that I downloaded it was the standard free. I may do a bit, uh, a video later on the business, uh, on the business one. So for right now, I'm doing this standard, but up next we'll come to business. All right. And you also have a donate button here and a Orion Lime R2 life cycle. And if you need some tech support, there's a form right here. You can fill out and, uh, add your information. All right. So this is uh, going to be uh, another look at Orion Line 2, R2. All right. All right, let's head on over to the virtual machine and take a look at it. Okay, I'm here on the virtual machine now and uh, got the ISO booted up. And we get a welcome screen, but we're going to click on no thanks first. And we're going to click on the button right here. There's two buttons, one that says try Orion and one that says install to hard drive. So we'll do the install to hard drive. All right. And here's the uh, Anaconda installer and it has my language selected as English, United States. That's correct. I'll click on continue. And right here, the, the ones that you see with the little warning label on them are the ones that you need to deal with. So we have installation destination. Let's click on that. Select that one and storage configuration automatic. And I'll just leave everything the way it is. Click on done. All right. So that little warning sticker went away. Now we'll set up a root password. Since I'm using a small password, it's going to ask me to uh, click twice up here. This little message you get down here says the password is too short. You will have to press done twice. So we'll do that. All right. Root password is set. Now we'll go to user creation and I'll create my user. And the password will be super strong again, but remember, you have to click twice. And right here, require a password to use this account, yes. And also make this user administrator. And I'll click done twice, since I use a super uh, strong sensitive password. All right, right now I see the time and date is set up to America, New York. So I'll go ahead and change that to Los Angeles, since I'm in Los Angeles. And there it is, America's Los Angeles. That's done. Click on done. And let's see, do we have any other thing we have to set up? The keyboard is already set up. Uh, network look at set up, so I'll click on begin installation. All right, so it's going ahead and uh, it's going to go ahead and install. So uh, while this process takes place, I will go ahead and uh, pause the video. When we come back, we should be uh, ready to take a look at Orion Lime R2. So I'm going to pause the video now. I'll see you guys when it's all done. Okay, and the installation is now completed. 
But uh, we do have a message down here that I didn't see. I don't know if it was there before, but I'm looking at it now. And it says, use of this product is subject to the license agreement found at user share Orient release EULA. So I'm not going to look at it, but uh, if it's something you want to take a look at, just be aware that that is there. I don't know if you should even be aware about it, but it is there. So I just wanted to let you know. All right, I'm going to click on finish installation and we're going to reboot into Orion Lime 2, R2. And we have reached the uh, login screen. So let me go ahead and click on my name, insert my super strong password. And it says display output is not active. Well, it set that for a second, but then it went away. So we're welcomed by the Orion uh, welcome tour. This is actually the GNOME welcome tour, but he's probably uh, set it up for his own customizations. But it, you'll see this basically on all uh, GNOME desktops. So let's go ahead and take the tour. And right here it says start the tour, learn about new and essential features in Orion Lime R2. Click on start and get an overview. Press activities to see open windows and apps. Make apps your own. Arrange the app grid to your liking. Keep on top with workspaces. Easily organize windows with the new workspaces view. And these are your hand gestures here. If you had a touch screen, or for your touchpad, so up, down for the overview. On the touchpad, use three fingers, vertical swipes, try it. And then left, right for workspaces. On the touchpad, use three fingers, horizontal swipes, try it. And then it says that's it. We hope that you enjoy Orion Lime R2. To get more advice and tips, see the help app. And I'll close this. And we got a message right here. While software updates ready to install, we'll go ahead and close this. And this is Orion. Like I said, this is a modified uh, GNOME desktop. Uh, got the panel on the bottom. Got your system tray on the right, along with the calendar. So if you click on this, it opens the same one that you would open up in GNOME with, that would usually be on top. But it's just everything on the bottom because you set it up as a bottom panel. And this should be the multi buttons, which is all. If you click them all, it's just one single button that opens up all the options. So you got your wire connections, balance, your volume control, settings, lock, and your power menus. And then we have a few uh, pinned items here on the left. So we have a terminal, help, software, files, and Firefox. And then next to that, we have our applications. So we click on applications here. And we have uh, the username on top, and then you have home, documents, downloads, music, pictures, videos, software settings. So this is like your folder construct on this section right here. But then you click a button that's right here. It says all applications, and it opens up a normal menu. So you got your favorites, frequent apps, accessories, education, graphics, internet, office, sound and video, system tools, utilities, and other. And that's your menu. And then you also have a search bar right here. So say, for example, you know, Firefox is installed. You just start typing it and it should show up. Then you also have your uh, power menus right here. All right, so let's take a look at the uh, pinned applications here. The first one, which is the uh, terminal, and it should be the GNOME terminal, but we'll confirm that in a second. Click on the little three dots here on the about, and it is the GNOME terminal, version 3.40.3 .3 for GNOME 40. And just for for fun, let's see if we have HTOP installed. We do not. What about NeoFetch? Not installed. This is a Alma Linux base, so I want to see if sudo DNF works. sudo DNF install HTOP and NeoFetch. All right, it might do a little update first. 
So yeah, it's going through the app stream. So it's updating the core repositories first, and then it should install those two apps, which shouldn't take long at all. It's pretty quick. It's just a HSOP and NeoFetch, which should download pretty quickly, but uh, we'll see right now. A lot of times with these uh, Alma base, you know, Fedora base systems, sometimes they have a uh, few quirks in them, but we did read on the webpage that it said that it had updated the repositories and things like that. So let's see how true that is and let's see how it works. We should see right here in a second. So, all right, error, unable to find a match HTOP Neo Fetch. So let's try one at a time. Maybe I'm doing this wrong. Nope, it's not able to. How about a uh, yum? Is yum installed? Yum. Y install htop neo fetch. Nope, no matches. All right, well, it was worth a try. Maybe if we open up the software center, we'll be able to get it, but we'll get into that in a second. And right here we have a help menu, which is your standard GNOME help right here. So if you want to know about your GNOME system, like I said, this is a modified GNOME system. So, you know, if you want to know how it works and get information on your desktop, networking, sound, video, files, user, hardware, accessibility, tips and tricks, get more help. And there's a small about right here, which is not really going to show much, just the license info. And that's pretty much it. All right. And then right here we have the software center. So this is the actual software center. So let's see if we can get a uh, HTOP and NeoFetch found through here. So I'll click on a little search and then I'll do first HTOP. And it says no application found. Maybe because it's Alma base, it may be just top. Let's see if. No, nah, that's not found. How about NeoFetch? doesn't look like it's finding anything let's see what's a simple let's try celluloid well not sure if anything could be found through here but uh well what's a simple app that i could find let's see uh let me try xfce just anything from app say no it's not finding nothing all right well, let's take a look at the uh, about software and it's software 41.5 a nice way to manage the software in your system and this is for gnome so i don't know maybe it's a uh... yeah it's not working so all right moving along to files this is your uh, file manager so you know just like any other system you got a file manager and you got your basic construct which is desktop documents downloads music pictures public templates and videos so, you know, you put your respective files in the respective folder and move along, right? But let's click on the three dots, take a look at the about, and it is files 40.2. Access and organize your files. All right. And then next to that, we have Firefox. So let's take a look and see what version of Firefox we're running on. Orion Lime R2. So we'll click on that, click on the help about Firefox and it is 115.7.0 ESR the extended support release all right the web browser works no problem all right so let's take a look at the applications and uh, let's take a look at the office we got LibreOffice so uh, let's check that out and it says you are running version 7.1 of LibreOffice for the first time. Do you want to learn what's new? I'm good. And this is your uh, Excel calc for Excel. But I'll close this and it should open up the, the rest of them right here where you get the writer, calc, impress, draw, math, but the base is not installed. Let's click on help, get on about LibreOffice and it is 7.1.8.1. All right, and that's a uh, LibreOffice. Let's get back to all applications. Sound and video, what do we have? We have Bracero, Cheese, and Videos. Bracero is usually, you know, like to create CDs, DVDs. It's a little outdated because uh, a lot of people don't use CDs no more, but uh, 
It's here if you need it. And let's take a look at the help on the about Bracero 3.12.2. All right, let's get back to the uh, sound and video. What else do they have? They have cheese. This is for your webcam. If you had a webcam connected, you could take a picture with some cool effects and things like that. It looks like you could take video also and burst mode. Uh, we'll take a look at the about and see what version of uh, cheese we got. And it is cheese 3.38.0. Take photos and videos with your webcam with fun graphical effects. All right, and let's take a look at the graphics, see what we have. Got Inkscape. That's something you don't see on a lot of systems. Yeah, open up a new document. So basically, this is a photo editing system. Uh, it's not like GIMP. It has some similarities, but it is different in its own way. And you can use this more for like uh, SVGs and things like that. But uh, it's a photo editor and it works. Let's look at the help about Inkscape. Inkscape, draw freely. So you got your about tab, your authors tab, translators, and license. And it tells you right here is Inkscape 1.1.1. And it's from 2021. If it ain't broke, why fix it, right? All right, let's get back over here, see what else we can take a look at. And see, under Internet, we already saw the Firefox, but you also have an X chat and a remote viewer. Under Utilities, you have your calculators, disk usage analyzer, disks, document viewers, image viewer. I'm wondering why this isn't over in the uh, graphics tab. Instead, it's right here. Or maybe it was, and I just missed it. But uh, let's take a look at uh, disk usage, disk usage analyzer. So it's kind of like a, a H top to where you can see uh, your system resources. And let's see what version of this we're using. Disk usage analyzer 40.0, a graphical tool to analyze disk usage. And if you click on your home folder, it'll give you a graph and give you all your processes that are running. And then if you go back, check out your local host, it'll do the same thing. Although, yeah, there he goes. So you get your uh, processes that are running and you get a graph of the usage. And it says could not always detect Occupy disk sizes. We're not worried about that. And then on the system itself, it'll do the same thing. All right. So this is Orion, Orion R2 line pretty good system very beautiful and uh, has some issues with his repository but I'm pretty sure uh, that'll get worked out soon but uh yeah everything looks good I like it so uh, I'll go ahead and leave the links down in the video description so you guys can check them out and uh, if you want to play with it see what you can do with it have at it all right you guys but that's gonna do it for me and I'm out mm -hmm.